Welcome to the third hands-on session of Communication Networks 2 and today's topic is about a ComNet emulator or ComNet AMO and this is the first part ComNet AMO is a lightweight emulator for network systems with computing My name is Zuo Xiang and I am a PhD student at Deutsche Telekom Chair for Communication Networks and I'm also the main developer of Commonness AMO. Today's session contains mainly three parts. Firstly, I will explain the motivation of Commonness AMO, and afterwards, I will give a detailed introduction of the emulator. Finally, we go through some examples for getting started. So, the first part is about the motivation. So if the title of this slide is underlined, that means uh, the content of this, this slide is important for the exam. Firstly, I want to mention that there are generally two approaches to, uh, in the research domain of communication networks uh, to prove new ideas, algorithms, or networking design. And the first one is more and modeling based and that means uh, the researcher uh, first try to model the new system um, with mathematical uh, method and then uh, try to uh, verify the model with analytical approach and this approach uh, the method used here is normally simulation and this approach uh, has advantages like it scales uh, easily and um, it, it also does not require uh, writing the uh, implementation of the system but it has the disadvantage that the correctness of the results is based on the correctness of the modeling and sometimes the mathematical the modeling is oversimplified that it does not contain many important factors in the real world system. For example, um, the latency introduced in the uh, network devices are sometimes uh, just ignored, which could lead to big performance issues in the real world system. So, there is a criticism of this method that the researchers are solving the mathematical problem they imagine rather than the original network problem itself. There is also a complementary method uh, which is mainly based on empirical uh, study. So the researchers try to prototype the idea with a real-world implementation and then try to evaluate the performance of the system uh, on real hardware and get a uh, uh, measurement results. Then uh, they use the uh, results to refine the mathematical model and then make the theoretical model more accurate. And this is my preferred approach. But the disadvantage of this approach is that it uh, involves the overhead of the complexity of uh, prototyping your ideas with a real world system. That's the reason why network emulators are not as popular in the, the research area. So if you can prove your idea through theoretical methods and verify that it can be implemented and also run in a real-world system, then your idea will be very convincing. When I got the task from the professor that he needs, a, he needs an emulator for the book Computing in Communication Networks from Theory to Practice, he listed several requirements to be fulfilled. The first one is the simplicity. The emulator must be lightweight and able to run most experiments on a single laptop. That means the students do not require buying special hardware to set up the test environment. This helps them to try new ideas with low overhead the second requirement is a reproducibility and shareability. It should be easy for students to share 
to reproduce and share the experiment with others. The third requirement is mapping real-world implementations and deployments as accurately as possible. This support and use concepts and this requires supporting and using of concepts and architectures deployed in the real world as much as possible. This can avoid oversimplified design. The next requirement is the emulator should support state-of-the-art practical technologies without high complexity. So compared to production-oriented platforms like OpenStack or, or Kubernetes, the emulator should only provide the necessary and orthogonal functionalities for testing innovative ideas without introducing significant complexity. For example, I have prototyped my idea using OpenStack for my diploma thesis. The system is complex and you need dedicated hardware to set up the OpenStack and um, if you need something that is already implemented in OpenStack, that's great. Uh, but if you want to add a new functionality or prototyping uh, totally new ideas uh, on that, it has a big complexity. It has many dependencies. And if one of them does not work, then you need to dip down and find the sources of the dependency you want to modify and this just introduce significant overhead uh, for a single student. Therefore, the last requirement is extensibility. It should be easily extended uh, based on the student's requirements. Before I explain why a mini-net is not enough for the emulator, let's look into an example. A simplified scenario of using network coding in a multi-cloud uh, deployment is illustrated in this figure. We will use this figure to explain the outline requirements in a practical uh, computing in network example. In this example, the mobile client can send raw data to the remote cloud for some uh, computational intensive and power hungry applications, for example, the object detection. The original data is transferred with random linear network coding to mitigate the transmission channel losses. The data is initially transmitted to the edge cloud. For, for this scenario, it is assumed that due to lack of the resources, the edge cloud must forward the packets to the centralized cloud for uh, further processing. A recording function is executed on the uh, edge cloud to perform RLNC recoding on the received packets before forwarding them to the centralized cloud. As typically encountered for deployments in the real-world data centers, Applications are commonly uh, containerized and managed by an orchestration system to run on a cluster of physical machines. When the client moves to another region, a handover could happen uh, and the data would subsequently need to be transferred to a new edge cloud. The recording function may also need to be redeployed uh, and or migrated to the new edge cloud to maintain the quality of the services when handover happens. The traffic redirection to a new edge cloud relies on the aggregation switch forwarding received packets to one of the alternative physical server inside the cluster for recoding. The two blue boxes here uh, in the edge cloud uh, physical servers. Uh, it is assumed that uh, each server can run containerized uh, recording function. So here one straightforward and interesting problem is uh, the server selection after the handover. Which server should be chosen depends on many aspects. For example, the server network topology uh, the propagation and transmission delay of the links in the topology uh, and also the available computational resources on each server. 
and the STM-based routing algorithms can be designed for this scenario and should be able to uh, run on our emulator. So the unmodified uh, vanilla uh, version of Mininet emulator introduced in the previous course is one competitive candidate for implementation uh, of the emulator for such scenario. Uh, however, the vanilla version of Mininet have some limitation for practical implementation of both uh, SD and NFV enabled network applications. Firstly, a Mininet does not provide sufficient resource isolation for practical em emulation. By default, only network namespace of hosts are isolated. That means hosts share the same file system process IDs and other resources. And this allows some tricks to be performed uh, in the emulation. For example, two hosts can use the underlying uh, file system to share data, which is uh, not practical for distributed systems. So we need full uh, uh, isolation. The default mini uh, only provides a CPU limited host node which supports CPU resource management. In order to emulate a variety of different real-world uh, computing applications, the emulator should provide more and fine-grained resource management functionalities. For example, for RAM usage, uh, I.O. usage, and extra. Secondly, a mini-net is designed for network simulation especially a network with SD enabled. It lacks support for NFV and other computing-oriented applications. For example, MinNet does not support deploying containerized applications directly on the isolated hosts. And thirdly, MinNet does not provide functionality to package and distribute, a distribute softwareization innovations introduced in this course. Therefore, our original idea is to integrate in Docker into Mininet. And there is another project called ContainerNet from Paderborn University, which is also uh, which is a fork of Mininet uh, uh, with uh, Docker container functionality added. Uh, but we do not use ContainerNet due to following reasons. Firstly, uh, our ComNet EMU uses a different approach to extend the MiniNet compared to ContainerNet. Uh, it uses MiniNet only as a dependency instead of modifying the MiniNet source code directly, so we do not fork the MiniNet project. Secondly, uh, ComNet EMU uses sibling containers to emulate network systems with computing. I will explain later uh, what uh, what is sibling container and if you go to the web page of the container net and go to the part of the links and you can see a link uh, of our emulator is added here and also of the container net uh, links that uh, comnet emo extends and pulls forward the concept and work in the container project uh, for network emulation. And that's all for the motivation. And before I go to introduction of the Comnet's EMU, I, I want to quote a famous sentence from Richard Feynman, uh, what I can't create, I do not understand. One important goal of Comnet's EMU is to uh, let you uh, build and create innova uh, innovative uh, approaches by yourself uh, instead of just calling something uh, encapsulated in an API and uh, don't know what happens in the background. Because when you build, uh, evaluate and test, then you can understand better uh, what happens. Now let's go through basics of the Comnet AMO. Comnet AMO is a lightweight emulator designed for emulation of versatile computing in the network application. It focuses on testing all its uh, building examples and applications on a single computer. 
And Compass Emu uses Docker container for host emulation in mini-lab topologies like container lab, and ESF lab, and Docker in Docker or Cypher containers is used as a lab with emulation of uh, nested virtualization. The Docker host with internal application containers deployed is used to mimic an actual physical host that run in Docker containers. And Comdesimo includes a collection of uh, basic examples, application examples, and handy scripts and recepts to manage the testing environment with minimal overhead. You can find the link of the source repository of Comdesimo on our course uh, webpage. If you click uh, Comdesimo, it will go to the uh, GitLab server hosted um, in our chair. And this is a public repo that you, you can access without any registration. And uh, it contains a detailed readme for many information. Uh, I will later show you how to set up a basic test environment. Uh, now you can use Git to first to clone the source on your host system. Uh, if you run any Unix like uh, operating system, then you can just open a terminal and run. A git clone method with a given URL, and you will get the source code. For me, it's already cloned, so uh, this command does nothing. Before we install Comnet Emo in uh, a virtual machine, I want to explain uh, what is Docker in Docker or Cypher containers. And um, Cypher containers are concepts to group one or uh, multiple containers. It is the approach used by Kubernetes to build pods. A pod is the smallest unit of management in Kubernetes, and you can find detailed information about pods through this link. And here is an example of, the, of a pod for a web service. And this web service can be further split into two microservices. Uh, one is a fire pooler, Another one is a web server. So the web pooler uh, get content through a, a content manager and uh, both two microservices share the same volume. So the web server can get uh, the content from this volume to uh, expose the data to the consumers. So these two microservices uh, containers are typical examples of sampling containers. Uh, sampling containers typically share networking resources and the resource limitation of their parent container. Uh, in Comdes Emo, the default application containers, uh, which is an instance of an uh, app container class in the Python code, uh, share the same network namespace and inherit the C-group limitation of the host on which it is deployed. Uh, that means it cannot use more resources uh, than the resource limitation of the host and it can only use the network resources uh, of the host. If you have already downloaded the source code of Comnet Emu, then let's go through the file catalog and some common facts uh, quickly. The source directory of Comnet Emu contains following directories and files. Firstly, the app folder contains all applications um, introduced in the book and they are classified into subdirectories. Uh, each subdirectory contains a brief introduction, source code, docker files, and utility scripts of the application. And the Comnet Emo directory contains source codes of Comnet Emo's uh, Python package. And the examples uh, folder contains all example programs for functionalities of Comnet Emu. And the test container directory contains Docker files and dependency files uh, for the Docker host. So it's for the external Docker containers used in the emulator. And the UT uh, directory contains utility and helper scripts. And the Vagrant file is uh, contains the recepts to set up the development uh, development and experiment VM environment. 
uh, which is a method we will use to set up the test bed. So the Comnet demo is mainly developed with uh, Python 3.6. Uh, the main reason of the language choice is uh, to leverage the powerful Python standard library to reduce the complexity of the dependencies. And the emulation performance is considered, but not the main focus. Uh, Comnet Emu is a little bit heavier than the Vanilla Minimap due to the complete host isolation. Uh, examples and applications in these repositories are mainly developed with high-level script language uh, for simplicity. Uh, these programs are not uh, performance-oriented and optimized. Um, you can contact me if you want a highly optimized implementation of the concepts uh, introduced in this repository. And for example, I have a highly optimized um, implementation uh, with DPDK acceleration for uh, low latency network coding, which can work in the some millisecond uh, round trip time. And this is also my current research focus. Uh, so it's a uh, low latency, high performance network function. Now let's set up the test uh, virtual machine environment on your laptop. Please follow the option 1 in the installation documentation to set up a VM uh, running uh, Ubuntu server, the LTS version. So the option 1 is to install a Comnet Emo in a Vagrant managed VM. And this is a highly recommended method. So Vagrant is a tool to manage virtual machine. And Vagrant supports multiple providers, including VirtualBox and also Libvirt. And most examples and applications included in this repository can run on VirtualBox, which is a cross-platform. And therefore, your host OS can be any OS that supports a uh, virtual box. Uh, there are some applications uh, which require uh, the uh, using libvirt as a provider because of some uh, time accuracy issues. And these are machine learning for routing and machine learning for congest con uh, congestion control. Uh, in order to Set up the virtual machine, and uh, you need to make sure the following dependencies are installed on your host system. The first one is a uh, Vagrant, and here is the version, the minimum version, and the second one is the uh, virtual box. In case you face some uh, issues, uh, please check the documentation here of some already known issues especially when you use uh, Windows as your host uh, operating system. Here there are some uh, known issues uh, for Windows setup. Uh, for example, if you fail to open extents uh, for the running nodes, uh, it is suggested to use uh, another uh, terminal emulator to solve the problem. And Another important thing is the VM resource allocation. And by default, uh, the VM we will create uh, has two virtual CPUs and four gigabit RAM allocated. And this is required to run all examples and applications smoothly. And if your machine does not have enough resources, uh, you need to change the variables in the frequent file before creating the machine. And some applications like uh, machine learning for object detection require a minimum 4 gigabit RAM to run smoothly and without crash. So that's the reason why uh, 4 gigabit RAM is chosen. I don't use Windows at all and I run Linux uh, on my host system. So uh, if I go to the directory of the Comnet Emu and then I can run a Vagrant status to check uh, the current status of the virtual machine. And please run following in comments in the terminal to perform uh, update unit tests and also build the documentation of the comments AMO. The 
can create the virtual machine by running a VWAND app on the uh, demo. And this step will create the virtual machine. And if you run this as the first time, and it will take around 20 minutes to download all the dependencies and set up the environment. For me, I have already uh, created the virtual machine, so uh, it takes shorter to boot up the virtual machine. And I will skip this part because I'm cur currently uh, recording the video and this makes my uh, machine a little bit slow. When you see the information in green uh, font uh, print printed, that means the virtual machine is already uh, successfully booted. Then you can run a uh, vagrant sh uh, from this demo to sh into the virtual machine. Now we are in the uh, virtual machine and uh, we are in the home directory uh, uh, of the VM. And this VM has a default host name uh, from this demo and the default uh, user and also the password are both uh, vagrant. We can check we are now in the home vagrant folder and this folder contains uh, the directory uh, comments emu and also comments emu dependencies. Um, if you use a virtual box as a provider and the comments emu directory here is uh, synchronized with the comments emu directory on your host system. So uh, you can modify the source code uh, on your host system with your preferred tools and then just run the experiments inside the VM. Uh, one important step is uh, to upgrade the comments emo and the dependencies. And you can find the GIF uh, uh, of the screenshots for running the upgrade process in the terminal on the uh, documentation. If you're now in the uh, virtual machine, and then you can just go to UT folder and then run the install script with a dash U option for upgrade. And here you need to make sure you already uh, checked and merged the latest updates of the source code in the remote directory. And you can do this by um, fetch the original master into master and then merge the orange uh, master into your current master branch to make sure you already update to the latest uh, commit in the master and then you can run install script and then type y for yes and then it will take some time to make sure uh, all the de dependencies are updated when you finish the update, uh, it, the script also asks you if you want to remove or dangling images. Uh, that means the image, uh, the images that are not used by any container. And if you type Y, it will remove or dangling images. You can check with Docker image uh, if there are any dangling images you want to remove. And now you can run unit tests. Of companies able to make sure it works on your system. Uh, let's go back to the root directory of companies emu uh, project and then run sudo make test. The reason uh, to use sudo is because uh, companies emu use mainnet as a dependency and it requires uh, root privileges to manage name specific groups. Uh, It takes some time to finish the unit test, normally like uh, uh, one minute. And because my machine is currently recording video, so I will skip this part to uh, just show you the result. So here is the result of the unit test. And if you see here, OK, so all the tests uh, passed. So that means you have a working environment. And now you can also build the documentation of uh, Commons AMO Python API, and you can just run make and dot inside the virtual machine.
and you, it will use the Sphinx to build the uh, application in HTML format. And um, when you finish building the documentation, you can open the documentation in your browser. Uh, it should be located in the doc uh, directory, then build HTML index uh, .html on your host system. And here you can get the home page of the documentation. And if you want to check uh, API, uh, of a function in, in the command demo package, you can just go here and for example, uh, we go to the net uh, module and we want to just check the add container method uh, of the app container manager and you can just check the type and also the information of the parameter and we uh, utilize the tab uh, annotation of uh, Python 3 for all the public APIs. So here uh, the variables um, has a specific type. So uh, that means uh, when you develop your applications, uh, you can just check, uh, open the documentation of Mininet for uh, Mininet uh, building method. And if you want to use a functionality added by the company's AMO, you can just check the Comnets AMO API. And by the way, if you want to start uh, multiple terminals inside VM, uh, there are two uh, general approach. Uh, one is to use a uh, terminal multiplexer inside VM, for example, Tmux. Then you can, uh, when you enter the Tmux, then you can use the functionality provided by Tmux to have like uh, multiple splits of the terminal or uh, multiple windows. And uh, another approach is maybe you open a new terminal in your host OS and then run the Vagrant SH again to SH into the VM. So the last part uh, of uh, today's se uh, session is to um, check some examples for getting started. And we will go through the Docker in Docker example, the Docker host manage app container example. And I think maybe it's better to put the echo server and also uh, the service migration example in the part two. And if you go to the example directory and you can find the Docker in Docker pipe file. And this this example demonstrates how to use Comnet Amos API to deploy uh, application containers inside Docker host instance. If you open this file with your favorite editor, and here there's a documentation. And so we have a chain topology, like we have uh, an and host. Uh, and each of them is uh, directly connected to the switch and all switches are connected uh, to build the chain topology and uh, if you already uh, play with the mininet then, you, uh, then this script is very easy to understand and here we only have uh, one argument for how many hosts uh, we want to have in the chain topology and then we just run test the docker in docker and if we go to the function test the docker in docker and the first step is uh, we create a, a container net uh, instance for our test and the difference from the container net instance instead of the mini net um, uh, class is uh, it also supports additional methods to open uh, X terms for Docker host instead of the Vanilla Mininet uh, host. And uh, the second step is we need to create the uh, VNF manager to uh, manage an internal uh, Docker host or internal application container. And then we just uh, perform some normal uh, steps uh, like in the Mininet. We first need to add the controller. And, and if we do not use remote controller, this is just a reference controller uh, provided by the mininet to have a just basic uh, layer to forwarding uh, scenario. And then we use the loop uh, to add the uh, 
um, Docker host in our topology. So the external uh, Docker host. And here uh, we have a parameter to give um, Docker and uh, Docker arguments um, into the container we create uh, for this port. And you can just uh, open the, the Docker as a ZK for Python. And you can find in the documentation about uh, the, uh, which arguments you can use and uh, uh, the meaning of each argument. For example, the image is which image you want to run. We do not give this in user doc arc. This is already specified. Um, here, use the D image um, argument. And uh, one example here is CPU set CPU. And you can check the documentation here. What is, um, you can just search CPU set. CPU and here uh, you get information uh, that uh, this this is you want to specify on which core you want to run the container and for example if I write here a uh, zero uh, that means I just want to put the container on the first core on my system and here you can also give uh, strings visited by comma for example zero and one that means um, Put the, put the container on first or the second container on the operating system and it, the OS will uh, make the choice. Then you also add the switch to connect the host and add the link with parameters like yeah, bandwidth 10 megabit per second and also 10 millisecond propagation delay. And then you store the network Okay, the important thing is when the network is started and then you can deploy as a container uh, application container on host. And as I already uh, explained in the documentation and you can just run the add docker method to deploy a new container uh, in the running host. And here, for example, uh, add a new container uh, named head and this is just deployed on the first host h1 it uses the dev test image which is uh, by default already built when you run the vagrant app and the method we want to run is just a bash shell and here we just uh, give empty docker arcs because we do not have special uh, options for this and you can also just uh, remove this um, argument to just use the default setup, but here we just um, left this uh, use the empty dictionary. And here, what we want to uh, test is just test if we can ping the uh, deployed application container, and we especially we want to test the. Uh, container uh, the head and the tail so the container deployed on the first host and the container deployed on the uh, last host in the chain topology and then we can uh, use um, the then we can use the, the lock method uh, of the tail container object to print out uh, the uh, standard output of the tail container and then we can call remove container and here the parameter must be a string then we can remove the head and the tail application container then we sleep a little bit and we want to check uh, the resource limitation of static containers if it works and here we already see that um, we do not specify the CPU limitation of the Docker host. So theoretically, it could use 100% CPU. But now we want to update the C group uh, limitation of the Docker ho host. And we want to 
uh, have uh, like uh, each Docker host can only use a maximum 50% divided by the number of the host percent uh, of the CPU time. For example, if you have two Docker hosts, uh, each of them could have maximum 25% CPU time. And uh, this is um, because uh, uh, by default, Linux kernel use uh, config free scheduling uh, scheduler, CFS scheduler. So here you need to specify the quarter and also the period. Um, and you need to give the CPU quota and the period to calculate the percentage of the CPU usage. And you can uh, check the documentation here uh, to figure out what is the CPU quota and what is the CPU period. And by default, the CPU period is 100 milliseconds. So here the unit is a microsecond, so we need to calculate uh, it should be 50,000 microseconds divided by n. And then we also update the memory limitation um, to 10 megabit. That means the Docker host can use maximum 10 megabit RAM. And then we use the, the tool called stress. Uh, ng so the next generation stress utility which is a common tool to uh, make you uh, make your system busy and we just want to check if the host uh, resource limitation works and what we do is we try to use 100 percent cpu here means just use one core and try to use 100 percent and uh, we also try to use uh, 300 megabit ram And then we put this into the uh, containers we want to deploy. And then uh, the uh, VNF manager also has the uh, monitor resource states method to monitor the actual resource usage of each container. Here we just iterate over all the containers and print out the average CPU and memory usage of each container. After that, we remove the containers and also stop the network emulation. And you can run the example inside virtual machine in the examples directory. Let's use Python 3 docker in docker pi. It, it will take some time, so I stop recording here. Now the emulation finished and we can check the output. Here you can see that uh, we pin uh, from the head to the tail and it works and it shows the, the run set time. The first packet takes uh, more time because of the initialization of the app protocol. Thus, and so that means the internal container can use the network resources um, of the host and here we can also see uh, the, the output here we can see the results of the resource uh, utilization and here we try to use a hundred percent and three uh, cpu and 300 megabit ram uh, but according to the monitoring uh, function we can see that uh, it uses maximum. Uh, it use it, it uses maximum a, a, around sixty percent CPU and about a ten megabit RAM. So that means um, the safety container mechanism work in our emulator. The next example is the Docker host uh, manage app container dot pi. And if you open the file, and here there's a documentation. And this example shows uh, how to manage application containers or setting containers uh, from one Docker host instance. And instead of what we just did, uh, calling functions directly on the manage object. And why we have this is this can be useful if you want uh, let one Docker host a new network to be the master node 
just like the master node in the Kubernetes, uh, to manage application containers on other worker nodes in a like a typical cluster system. And in this example, the host one is a master node, and the host two wants to create an app container uh, with this given name on it by just sending a in packet to the host one. That means if um, the host one receives the pin packet from the host two. The host one, because it's a master node, so it will uh, allocate a new uh, app container on host two. And how host one uh, manage it, this is to use the REST API provided by the app container manager uh, building uh, HTTP server and then it can use the common uh, host and delete uh, HTTP requests to manage application containers. And uh, because by default all the Docker hosts are connected to the Docker Zero bridge um, on the host system, so this bridge is used to connect the Docker hosts and the app uh, containers HTTP server. So if you want to check the implementation of the REST API, uh, just check the uh, docker host uh, dot py for details. And for example, we can check connect able uh, net pi, and then we can check uh, the REST API handler of the HTTP server running by the app container manager. So here, if we check the source code, it's similar to the docking docker example. The only difference here is um, we first to just deploy an app uh, application container on host one use the native API like what we did in the docking dock example. And here um, we need to manually run the HTTP server and uh, with a given port and the IP address. And now uh, the app container start its HTTP server and then you can use a REST API on, on the master node for app contain uh, app con container management and here we try to uh, ping from host 2 to host 1 and host 1 just use a uh, tcp dump and here with dash c that means if it uh, get one packet then the tcp dump to stop so here we wait for the host 2 to ping, uh, uh, ping host 1 and if the tcp dump uh, stop then the host one will request to create a application container on host two uh, use the REST API. And here we just use the command line utility uh, curve, then use post method, and here give the data. Uh, this is just um, the uh, parameters of the add docker method, but uh, encoded in JSON format. And then we just send this to the uh, request the URL and here uh, we will just check if the container is really deployed by this method and here we again use the REST API to delete the deployed container then we stop the emulation and you can also run this test inside the virtual machine And you can see the output. Now we deploy the first uh, application container on the host one with the native API. And now the host one is wait for the ping from the host two. And now uh, it gets a packet from the host two, and then it will deploy the app container serve to the uh, underscore one on the host two use the REST API. We can see now we have two application containers deployed. And now we 
here again use the method to remove the container and we can see the app container is removed and now it will start the mini net cli and we can call the exit function to finish the emulation so uh, that's all for today's session and uh, thanks so much for your listening and if you have any questions uh, please send me an email we'll see you in the next hands-on session